Scientists at Nanyang Technological University have found a way to turn plastic waste into a valuable chemical that can be used for purposes like energy generation. The researchers developed a catalyst to break down plastics using light energy. Vanessa Lim with more. The yellow liquid you see in the flask is actually dissolved plastics. It has been mixed with a catalyst made from a metal which is low cost and doesn't harm the environment. Put the solution under LED lights and it transforms into formic acid. It's a chemical that's used to make products like preservatives and fuel cells for storing hydrogen. Millions of tons of formic acid are produced every year, mostly using fossil fuels. But this will not be sustainable in the long run as demand increases. For the same reason, chemists at Nanyang Technological University also plan to switch away from LED lights and use sunlight instead, even though it might be a less reliable light source. Our intention is to actually find a way to actually turn things that we already have um, and then recycle them and, and upcycle them into more valuable products without actually generating more greenhouse gases. By turning items like plastic bags and styrofoam into formic acid, the project could help to tackle the problem of packaging waste. Right now, the project is still in its infancy, but with plans to scale it up and to use only renewable energy sources to power its process, this could pave the way for a more sustainable future and also boost plastic recycling rates. Now, last year, more than 900,000 tons of plastic waste was thrown out in Singapore, but out of this, just 4% was recycled and the rest was incinerated. For now, researchers are looking at speeding up the process, which currently takes about a week. And for more on the new discovery out of NTU, Assistant Professor Sue Hansen joins us in studio for more on this. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so tell us, uh, how did this idea sort of come about? Yeah, so actually we started working on this because of the haze. So in 2013, uh, which was just after I started at NTU, um, we had a period of a few months where it was, uh, we, we had really bad haze. I think the PSI exceeded like 400. Mm. And the, rem the reason I remember this really well is because even though our labs are indoors, we actually had, um, when the haze is really bad, the, the air actually comes in from the gaps of the doors and our labs and the corridors were actually hazy. So this got me to think about how, as a chemist, I could uh, try to solve this problem. So we targeted uh, wood because I was trying to think of uh, trying to solve this as an economic issue. So when the farmers chop down the, the trees and burn it, it's because it's the most convenient and cheapest way to mm. deal with that waste. But if you can incentivize them to actually not do that, then we can potentially uh, find ways to turn it to, into a profitable system. So we first developed our, uh, the first generation of our catalyst to actually target wood. And then in 2017, what uh, we then did was to actually apply for and we received some funding from ASTAR um, to try to turn biomass into fine chemicals. Mm. And during the review process, uh, the panel actually suggested that we look at other targets. And so because our technology breaks carbon-carbon bonds, so the thing that came to my mind is we can actually target non-biodegradable plastics, which are just full of carbon-carbon bonds. Okay. okay, so how did the process come about from converting plastics into something that is actually useful? You know, give us a, a quick um, process of that. And what were some of the hiccups that you faced along the way? Sure. So the, the analogy I like to give is to think of a zipper and the plastic is like a zipper and then the catalyst is like the handle on the zipper. So um, in order to get reactions to take place, we actually need to have some energy input. And in fact, uh, sunlight is an, more or less an infinite source of energy. So in just about one hour, there's actually more than enough energy to power all of humanity's energy needs for an entire year. So in other words, uh, so what we wanted to do was to try to use sunlight instead of heat, because when you use heat, you need to burn fossil fuels. So Which our- To defeat the purpose. Exactly. Yeah. So what we then did was to uh, develop a catalyst that can use sunlight to break carbon-carbon bonds. So our catalyst works by latching onto a functional group called an alcohol in the plastic, and the alcohol contains an oxygen. So once it latches on, it absorbs light, and then it breaks the carbon-carbon bond next to the alcohol. So this makes the plastic one carbon shorter and it forms a fragment that can react with oxygen in the atmosphere to form another alcohol. So this process can then repeat because the alcohol can then latch back onto the catalyst. And then subsequently, uh, as we keep irradiating it, then it becomes like a zipper where we are just unraveling all the carbon-carbon bonds and turning it into useful chemicals like forming acid. Okay, and does this work for all types mm. of plastics? I noticed you brought in some different types here. Right, that's a very good question. So. 
Our catalyst works by breaking carbon-carbon bonds, mm. so it only targets plastics that have continuous chains of carbon-carbon bonds. So the th common ones that we usually find are things like uh, these materials, like plastic bags, straws, and these types of plastic containers, which are usually either polyethylene, polystyrene, or polypropylene. But it doesn't really work for uh, containers like these, uh, which are made of polyethylene terephthalate. So these actually contain oxygens in there that actually halt the process. Mm. So don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that we cannot recycle these. You can still recycle it by the traditional processes, ju just not with what we use. Mm. Okay, what about styrofoam boxes? Can, we also, can you also use styrofoam boxes? Are they also the same process, like what you're saying, the yes, carbon carbon? Yes, yes. So even styro styrofoam boxes are also um, recyclable in this... Um, exactly. Okay, how long do you think it'll take before we actually start using this on a bigger scale? Uh, that's a very good question too. So um, I would say that we are on a, what we call a technologically ready scale of about one to three, which means uh, we have proved the concept. Um, but um, we will need quite a bit more funding maybe, and in about five years, we can potentially try to target something. So what we're trying to do right now is that we need to improve how we uh, reuse the catalyst and also separate it from the products. So in the process, we actually dissolve the catalyst with the plastic, mm. but we need to actually be able to find a way to recycle it. And there are two potential ways. One is we can make it really cheap and not, not reuse it. And the other way is to try to think of a device like putting it on the so in the solar panel on the reservoir. So the, in the first method, what we do is that we can make the uh, material really cheap, just disperse it in the ocean, let it sit for a few days, and then not recover it. But I'm not so keen on that because then we don't actually recover the useful chemicals. So the other way is we can actually embed our catalyst on the surface of, let's say, a cartridge or a tube or even a shallow pond, and then we leave it out in the sun, and this way, then the, the sun can shine, and after a few days, we'll collect the product at the end. So what we want to do is to actually uh, work with uh, our colleagues in NTU. There's this uh, uh, renewable energy integration demonstrator in Pulau Samakau, and we hope to actually demonstrate it uh, using uh, that as a pilot plant. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming and sharing it with us. We wish you all the best uh, with your endeavours with it. Assistant Professor Su Han Sen from Nanyang Technological University's School of Physical and Mathematical Sciences. Thank you.